Hello, welcome to Professor Sky's Record Review, the only first listen new music review show hosted by a French professor immediately after leaving the gym. It's episode 228, and I am going to be reviewing uh, the album De Moitis by the band Blenavon. I'm going to talk about my mispronunciation soon. Um, so, the thing is, you know, is I'm an intellectual, I'm a professor, so it kind of makes sense that I'm not usually insecure about my intelligence. And I usually find it funny when I recognize myself as being not very intelligent about something. So, uh, this review is going to start with a description of why I am what I call a dummy dummy dum dum. <laughs> um, and uh, it has to do with that pronunciation I just gave you, Blenavon Demoides. So, no spoilers, but I'm going to start the review and then I'm going to tell you the point where I did just the smallest amount of research, which elucidated everything. The nice thing is all of my initial takes were correct, but I was coming at them from the wrong angle and with a stultifying lack of information. I will say that that's part of what makes this show... Uh, okay, well, I don't know if the show is good. Part of what I like about the show is that I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert about music. I'm not an expert on indie rock, on rap, on electronic dance music. I've never heard of Blenavon. I don't know if they're huge. I don't know if they're small. I don't know where they're from. I just see the little icon on title and I click it and I listen to it. And if I think it's good, I review it. And if I think it's bad, I skip it. So forgive my ignorance. It's the source of my power. So my initial review was going to go something like this. Well, you know, if you look at this album, Demoides by Blenevon, I think you can tell a lot from its cover. And here I'm going to show you the cover right now. You see that cover? That really depicts a lot of what this album is like. It's enigmatic. It's well done. It's rough. Is it even intentionally rough? Kind of sketchy. When I listened to this record, I thought, this doesn't even sound like a fully fleshed album. I mean, at parts it does, but for the most part, it seems like it's just a collection of demos. Like, like the lead singer died or something, and they found this guy's demos on his phone, and then they like, released them basically unchanged, but added a couple elements here and there. That's what I was thinking about halfway through the album, until finally I thought, well, I better look this up, just to make sure. Like, and it turns out, oh, uh, it's pronounced Blenavon, and they're from Hampshire, England. So, I, I don't know where that is, I think it's in the south. And then I looked at the title again and realized, De Demoitis is Demo-itis. The reason that it sounded like demos is that it is, in fact, an album of demos. And this band has already released an album this year. Professor Sky, Dummy Dummy Dum Dum. But that being said, I want to keep in this little bit of misunderstanding because I think it shows a lot of the strength of this album. I mean, to, to my defense, sorry, that's the sound of Toby scratching his neck. You okay, Toby? Yeah, he's looking at me like I'm gonna feed him again. I'm not going to. I wish you could see how intensely this dog is looking at me. Anyway, um, so I mean, I can be forgiven, right? The name of the band is Blenavon, which I guess is some Welsh word. But how am I supposed to know what that means? So when I see some word that I don't know what it means next to some other weird word that I don't know what it means, I just sort of take it all together. It's just like Blenavon de Medis. So, and then the other thing is, uh, the first half of the record actually sounds fairly produced. It sounds like it could be a sort of lo-fi album. Um, to the point where at, at one point I, I wrote about one of their songs, uh, Everybody Loves Talking S-Word, um, that it sounds like a lost track on another album, but that there's a sort of technique that they use of having like multiple guitars or multiple instruments and then cutting away to the sound of a demo. And it creates a sort of interesting production that seems to go between the extremely raw and the slightly raw. Like a good French steak, right? Um, they don't cook their... If you ever order steak in France, it, it moves, it's great. Um, so, like, it's part of what makes this such an interesting album, and it is an interesting album, and it is one worth listening to, because whatever these songs are, they are either something very interesting that you wish was a little bit fleshed out, 
or the beginning of something which will be something better. Um, the main salient characteristics I would say of this album are the clarity of the vocals. This guy's vocals, they could cut bread. Damn it, I don't that. You know, I have all this time to prepare my metaphors. I think they could cut bread, right? That's sharp. That's a sharp thing to do. But they're very sharp vocals. And you see that right in, the, in this introduction. The introduction track is unlike the rest of it. It's like this strange dirge. You know, it's about like talking to this girl who's like waiting, or a guy, actually, I don't know, about waiting to go to he heaven's back door and talking about life and death. And there's all these great lyrics. I love you to the sun and back. You ask me what kind of effing euphemism is that? Lots of casual swearing on this record, by the way. Uh, which I think it adds to this feeling of just kind of like, hey, we just kind of... Apparently this whole thing was, much like every episode of this podcast, recorded on an iPhone. Uh, which is actually pretty spectacular, considering uh, how good it sounds for the most part. But this introduction, it's really worth a listen. I'm not going to play it for you, because it's not that exemplary. But I would have a listen to it if you are interested in what I'm talking about with this band. Because... You don't hear vocals this clear or piercing paired with such great vocal, with such great lyrics very often. That's a, that's a weird compliment to give a band. The vocals are good and the words are good, but that doesn't always happen. A lot of stuff that I like, like the vocals are fine and the lyrics are great or some, some kind of combination there. Uh, as it goes on, you can again forgive my confusion. The second track has a featuring. It's featuring somebody else. So I'm like, this must be a full album. Okay, I'll, I'll drop that bit now. Um, that's where the thematics of the album start to really become clear. It seems that it's a lot about being young, being in your probably early 20s, uh, about being around people who are on drugs, about feeling like you're losing control, losing contact with your friends. Uh, a lot of songs about friendship and loss. There's a song called F You and F Your Friends. Um, uh, but all of it's mixed in with the, the lyrics that really, really surpass the music, even. Uh, lyrics like, I don't want to die, but I don't want to live like this. You know, I don't know. That's some of my favorite lyrics, right? Is lyrics that are simple, almost cliche, but have enough of a turn to them that they are divine. And I would say, I don't want to die and I don't want to live like this is an example of that. Um, some other tracks have like synthesizers and drum machines on there. And I was <clears throat> uh, just like, again, thinking how much I'd like to see it more produced. And then that's where it became really clear on this track, Multiple Personality Disorder, uh, the singer just starts laughing and they leave it in there. And I'm like, wow, this, this is really, really raw. Um, that track, uh, Duck You and Duck Your Friends, that, that's what it said on my autocorrect on, uh, on my notes program. Hey, thank you, Apple. <laughs> Giving Ducks a bad name. Um, this is maybe my favorite track on the record. This is really well produced. It has like this synth horn blast and like interesting guitars. Like the, the lead guitar line is, is almost like a failure. Like it has like this weird sound. And at a certain point, uh, it almost even sounds like the tune yards, almost like artistic rock, like sort of anti-pop. Uh, has this really strong guitar line and then the vocals following the guitar line. And I'd say that's one of their signature sounds. That's one of the things that defines them. Is it appears the singer just plays a couple chords and sings over it. And then has a second part or a different part in which notes are played. And then the melody goes along precisely with the notes. Uh, there's another track I, I'd like to highlight called Slow Down Cyclist, which is a piano demo. So it's not just a guitar demo, but it's a piano demo. And I'd say the perfect example of this whole style uh, is the final track, Whatever You Want To Be. So I'm gonna play you just a little bit of the verse as it leads into the chorus. And um, I think you'll hear the strong vocals and this kind of style of kind of lo-fi playing guitar and singing and then the really nice um, guitar that's matched by, uh, by the vocals. Here is Whatever You With Umlauts Wanta Be. By Blaivinan, by Benelon. I 
I like that. Uh, I listened to this one and a half times, and then I decided to listen to their album that they released this year. I must have heard it before. I listened to everything as it comes out, and I must have given it a cursory listen and said, mm, not for me. I'm fascinated by this demo album because I think this is better than their fully produced record. And I listened to their fully produced record and it's not terrible. I'm not gonna give it an official review. It's definitely not terrible, but it's really heavy on sort of 90s-esque production. At times they sound even like Oasis, which in my mind is, is not a great thing. Um, it didn't sound like what I imagined these demos exploded into a fully produced song uh, or fully produced album. So my hope is that the, the excellent lyrics the interesting songwriting, these amazingly piercing vocals would be paired with production that maybe actually is not as polished as their, as their complete album and not as rough as this. Maybe like a, like a rare steak in an American restaurant, you know, a, a little red, right? I think that might be good because it seems like they're a young band and they're, they're up and coming and I think they have a great album in them. I don't think either of these is it. But I think that the seeds of the great album are in here and in these songs and in this production and in this outlook. Okay, so Mr. Dummy Dum Dum, Professor. Uh, it's weird because it's the end of the year or it's the beginning of the year and there's so few albums released. This was released on Christmas, so I'm actually a couple weeks late, but it's all right. We'll catch up to everything. All right, until next time, there's the camera. Wait, there. <laughs>